he would bring us into his family. Yeah. Two little boys, I uh, found out I'm going to be baptized in a little bit, two brothers here today. Uh, and uh, you know I was about their age when I trusted Christ as my Savior, and uh, that's a blessing. Sunday school, Bible school, uh, junior camp this week, all the things that are going on for the young people. Uh, car wash yesterday, making some funds for these things to happen. And uh, no reason why we can't get excited Amen. about serving our Lord. It all started with me about six years of age. Now think on that just a moment. Some of us have lost some time. You think God can redeem some of those years the devil stole from us? Absolutely. By the way, I want to say thank you to everyone who's prayed for my family that has sent cards or uh, calls or texts or emails. And the first day after my mother passed, all I did was answer uh, calls and sent texts back to people. And uh, boy, just people around the world. Uh, that, you know, it, it made me think, I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God. Amen. Woo! Can you imagine what it would be like when we get to heaven? We'll probably spend the first few million years just fellowshipping. Amen. Just hugging people's necks. What a glad reunion day that will be. And you say, Preacher, are you a little bit sad, a little bit down today? Well, Mama was hurt. She ain't hurt now. Amen. Furthermore, uh, she's there, and she's with all of her family. And uh, one of the last things she said to me, she said, Son, I love you with all my heart. She reached up and gave me a kiss. I mean, in her total perfect mind, Brother Bruce, that's God. And then she said, furthermore, she said, I love all of my family. She wasn't just talking about the ones down here. <laughs> Amen, Mother Chris. She's talking about the ones going on to be with the Lord. And so they were there at the gate waiting on her when she got there. And uh, so uh, you say, are you so, why are you so excited? Because heaven's a real place. Amen. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And we're part of those people. And I want to tell you today how to make sure uh, how to be 100% sure you're going to this place called heaven because you know what? You don't want to miss out. I don't think Jesus went all to the preparation of 2,000 years now preparing us a home in heaven and you miss it somehow on some little technicality. So get it nailed down today. I like the verse, the text verse in verse number 9 of chapter 3 of the book of 2 Peter. The Lord is not slack. Now, friend, if you want it, huh, he's not going to leave you behind. Right, He's not going to forget you. He said, I don't know why I cast anyone out that comes to me by faith. But here we see the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is. Notice this. Now, this is the key to salvation. God is long suffering to us. He has a heart for us. Do we have a heart for God? Amen. He's long suffering to us. We're not willing that any should perish or go to hell, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, the mission of this church and every church in the world is to keep people out of this terrible place called hell. That's the reason Jesus came. The central theme of all the Bible is the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart was rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Which comes first, Pastor? Faith or repentance? I think it comes first in the heart. And then by faith, that's the true sign of repentance, amen. It's a heart chain. It's a heart matter. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans chapter number 10 and verse number 10. So I believe it starts in the heart. Be careful about your heart because it's deceitfully wicked above, above yeah. all things the scripture said. And so uh, be careful what's in your heart because, listen, there could be a holy desire there to do right. Serve God, live for Him, and accept Him in your life. And there could be an unholy desire that would hold you back. Yeah. I mean, all of us on our teeter totter throughout our whole life. And uh, uh, the very moment, the very second that we uh, trust Christ as our Savior, Satan is working overtime to uh, try to hinder you from becoming a Christian. Don't listen to Him, listen to God. That, that might be the message there to that. I didn't plan to say it, but I promise you this. We need to look and we need to see Jesus hanging, bleeding, and dying on the cruel cross of Calvary. And I promise you this. If you see our Savior and what he did in the full payment, the pardon of our sin, I promise you, you'll pray a repentant prayer. I pray. It'll, there'll be some contrition uh, on your part. If you truly know and understand, he nailed your sins to this cross. He did not want you, listen, not one sin is going to slide out of the door of heaven. 
He wanted to make payment for you. He wanted to make a way for you so that you could have eternal life. And he came and paid in full on the cross with his blood. Amen. He kept us from an awful place called hell. I'm talking about God's final payment for sin. Listen, should move us. Should move us to tears, number one. But tears are not, not everything. Esau saw carefully repentance uh, with tears, the scripture says, but he found no repentance. Amen. So we understand uh, that repentance changes our whole outlook on life. I'm telling you, it'll change you. It'll turn you around. You'll be going one way, and, and then the Lord will remind you of His goodness. The goodness of the Lord, Romans 2 and 4, leadeth us to what? Repentance. It's about faith. You're going one way. You're going downhill. You don't even realize it, but you're about to go over the cliff, and God throws you a life preserver. He says, hold it. Wait. Stop. You're about to go over. Let me throw you a life. Turn around, you look across, you look at Jesus in his crawl, and by faith he received it in your heart. Woo! Listen, my friend, your life will change. I said your life will change. Bob Jones Sr. said this: if there's been no change of life after conversion, there has been no conversion. That's right, right. Jesus has come, not just to set you free, not just to save your soul. He's come to change your whole entire future. Amen. He's come to destroy the works of Satan in your life. Friend, don't you think it just stops the moment you get saved and he quits dealing with your life after that. It has just started. You had just begun a new life, a new walk with God. Before you could talk to him, before you could communicate with him, before you didn't have no relationship with him. But your relationship, the very moment, the very second you receive Christ as your personal Savior, my friend, listen, you have access to the Father. Amen. Listen, if there was no heaven, and we know there is, and thank God there is. Amen. If there was no heaven, but we had access to God through his son Jesus Christ in prayer, whoo, and by his Holy Spirit, it'd be worth it getting saved. Because through the Holy Spirit, we get love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, temperance, faith. You understand how important it is to have? Listen, the faith that you receive, the faith that you have to trust Him, guess where it comes from? You don't even have that. It comes from God. It's a gift. For by grace are you saved through faith. There it is. And that, that not of ourselves, it's a gift of God. It's a gift. And secondly, did you know that repentance that's needed for salvation, there are two simultaneous graces that happen to you the very moment. The very second that you receive Christ, guess where you get the repentance from? It's not a work of the flesh. It's a work of God in your heart. Yeah. It happens the very moment that your heart is tender up for the lovely Lord Jesus Christ that died and gave himself as a ransom and as a payment for all of our sin. And you believe that he died and was buried and rose again. And listen, my friends, something happens in the heart. That's right. It's a heart matter. Salvation is a heart matter. You can't get saved. You see, I long, I, I think we, we're overdue for preaching on this. Why? Because we have such shallow faith in churches today, superficial uh, faith in churches today that has head knowledge but no heart conviction. Amen. Jesus Christ will change your heart. If he doesn't change your heart, something didn't happen, right? That's right. Amen. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 25. If you're looking up a companion verse this morning, this would be a good one to reference. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25. God, peradventure, or by some chance, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. By chance, perhaps, or it may be, peradventure is an old English word, but by some chance, God gives a chance to every man, according to Ecclesiastes. He gives you maybe even just one chance to turn to Him. You better be thankful today that you had a second chance and a third chance. And in America, we get all those chances, don't we? Church is on every corner. And by faith, we believe that when we hear the word, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We believe that when we come, it will change us. That's what we're here for. I can't go without hearing the word of God all about you. But I want to say repentance comes from God. Now, it's not repenting of all of your sins in order to be saved. Let me just say this. It's a change of the heart. So you are repenting of what when you repent of your sin? There's only one sin that will keep you from heaven. It's the only sin that cannot receive forgiveness. It's the unpardonable sin. It must be repented of. It's the sin of unbelief. It's the, it's the sin of saying no 
to God's holy begotten Son. You say no to him and he'll say no to heaven for you. You've got to turn from that. You've got to get over that. That pride that, that, that builds up in all of our hearts thinking, hey, you know, I'm a pretty good person. I, I'm just as good as a person down the street. I, I don't think I'm all right. I hear people tell me all the time, I'm okay, I'm good. That's pride. That's the epitome of pride. That you say you don't need Jesus Christ and his pardon of sin. You don't need his atoning work of blood that was shed for you. You'll go to hell like a bullet. Now, God is merciful and God is long suffering, but I'm just here to tell you the truth. This old Baptist preacher is going to tell you the truth. Did you know that Peter, the greatest message that's ever been preached outside of Jesus Christ, the very first words out of his mouth in Acts 2.38, you'll find it there. He was telling that mob that had hung Jesus on a cross. He said, repent, be baptized, every one of you. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what he said. Did you know over there, uh, when Peter, when Jesus himself preached the message, he said, likewise you shall perish. He said, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Amen. Paul, the great preacher, greatest Christian in shoe leather, amen, that ever walked this earth outside of Christ. He was, he was right after him, wasn't he? He wasn't divine, but I promise you one thing. He, he was striving to be like Jesus. He said in Acts 17 and 30, he said this, he said, once God weak in ignorance, but now he commanded all men everywhere, all men everywhere to repent. And did you notice our text this morning, it also mentions the word all. He says, all suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all. Amen. The biggest little word in the Bible, A-L-L, -L, all should come to I believe that Jesus is high and holy, lifted up. I believe if we'll lift up the Savior, John 12, verse number 32, if I lift it up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Can all people be saved? Yes, according to that verse. Will they be saved? Depends on us. Depends on if we'll lift up the Savior. And not just our work, but in our lifestyle. Are we listening to Jesus? Are we praising His holy name? Are we blessing Him? Are we telling people about Him? Are we ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? This gift of repentance comes coupled with the gift of faith simultaneously and instantaneously wrapped in one unique package. Yes, it's the gift of salvation. It starts the very second you receive Him, but I promise you this, it goes throughout all eternity. The gift of God's love. Isn't it wonderful? Woo! Listen to me, my, I tell you one thing. He gets this young preacher, and I said, "Young, did y'all hear it? It makes this young preacher happy to think about salvation. Did you know we won't exhaust the subject of salvation? We're just kind of scratching the surface. Amen. And there's some gold nuggets in there about salvation we haven't even talked about yet. Amen. Listen, I'm talking about a person on their way to hell who suddenly gets turned around by Jesus Christ. It wasn't anything that they did. He saved them and set them free." Put on a new course. That's right. The very course of nature of their life has changed for them. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Isn't that a beautiful thought? Right. Then I want to say not only is repentance comes from God, but there is no exception. All need to repent according to this verse. If God says all need to repent, the Bible is not going to ever lie to us. Amen. All need to repent. Amen. The old preachers used to preach it. But, but for some reason, uh, these modern-day Baptist preachers, when it comes time to preach on the subject and the doctrine of repentance, they get timid, shy, and bashful. They must be worried about their retirement package. Right. We've got to look quiet right now. Amen. Must be worried about their uh, salary or something. Well, we've got to preach the whole uh, counsel of God from cover to cover, from Genesis Amen. to Revelation. That's right. We've got to preach it whether people like it, whether it's, it's convenient or unconvenient. Or non but we've got to preach it whether it's faithful or unfaithful. Amen. We've got to preach it whether it's like or dislike. Nonetheless, it must be preached. And we must preach the thus saith the Lord. And Jesus Christ himself said, you must repent. You must be born again. Amen. I believe the Bible. To repent literally means to have a change of mind or spirit towards God and towards sin. It means to turn from your sin earnestly with all your heart and trust Jesus Christ to save you. He's the only one that can save you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read you and reference you some of the men, the great men of yesteryear. 
Y'all ever heard of a gentleman by the name of Charles Haddon Spurgeon? The Prince of Preachers, he was called. He didn't like being called that, by the way. Listen to what he says. Just now some professedly Christian teachers are misguiding many by saying that repentance is only a change of mind. It is true that the original word does convey the idea of a change of mind, but the whole teaching of Scripture concerning the repentance which is not to be repented of, that is a, a much more radical and complete change that is implied by our common phrase about changing one's mind, the repentance that does not include sincere sorrow for sin, not the saving grace that is wrought by the Holy Spirit. God given repentance makes men grieve in their innermost souls over the sin they have committed and works in them a gracious hatred of evil in every shape and form. We cannot find a better definition of repentance than the one many of us learn by at, on our mother's knee. Repentance is to leave the sin we love before and show that we in earnest grieve by doing so no more. Charles Haddon Sir Spurgeon, London, England, February the 1st, 1872. Amen. I like what he said. Right. Let me give you something that was said by one of our contemporaries of this last uh, 20th century, J. Frank Norris, pastor of two largest churches in America at the same time. First Baptist of Fort Worth, Texas, and the Temple Baptist Church of Detroit, Michigan. He'd fly up there one week, he'd come back down to Texas the next week. I don't know how he did it. He must have had some good helpers. Baptists preach the gospel of repentance for sin. They preach and practice the very same gospel of repentance of salvation and baptism as the first Baptist preacher. We have any record of whose name was John and who came from God. J. Frank Norris lectures on Romans 1947. B.H. Carroll. A man who was from my same hometown, my little town in Arkansas, Monticello, Arkansas. Listen to what he said as he founded Southwestern Baptist Seminary uh, there in Dallas, Texas. Uh, you'll see uh, that place over there. Many have gone to get their education over there. He said this about repentance. I give it as my deliberate conviction, founded on 25 years of ministerial observation, that the Christian profession of today owes its lack of vital godliness, its want of practical piety, its absence from the prayer meeting, its miserable semblance of missionary life, very largely to the fact that old-fashioned repentance is so little preached. You can't put a big house on a little foundation. And no small part of such preaching comes from a class of modern evangelists who desire more for their own glory to count a great number of converts than to lay deep foundations, reduce the, con uh, the conditions of salvation by one half and make the other half but some intellectual trick of the mind rather than a radical spiritual change of the heart. Like Simon, he said, uh, Marcus, that they believe, uh, they believe indeed, but their heart not being right with God. Uh, and so we understand, he said this, they are yet in the gall of bitterness and the bond of iniquity. Such converts know but little and care less about a system of doctrine. They are prayerless, lifeless, and to all steady church work reprobate. To repent literally means to have a change in it. There is a change. There is a change. We were in Romania for five years of our life as foreign missionaries. This was this. My wife and family, uh, we were over there. And uh, I don't think there's anything that... Uh, that well in our family altogether uh, than us being over there uh, in a foreign uh, land, a city of about 850,000 people. We were the only uh, Americans there, and we had to depend on the Lord, trust in Him with all of our heart. And you know what? We got closer together, and I loved it every minute of it. Uh, listen to what uh, these people, dear people, over in Romania call Christians. They don't call them Christians. Listen to this now. They call them the polka winks. The polka winks, that's our name over there. You know what it means? The repenters. <laughs> the repenter. <laughs> Brother George Dragner preached in this uh, pulpit. He was a man that we had to train over in Romania, and every message he preached, 
without fail, he preached on repentance. He was the John the Baptist uh, of Romania. And so we understand that it's being slack today, but God's still not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness. But it's long suffering toward usward. Amen. He's long suffering, the scripture said, towards usward, not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. I believe the Bible. If all else fails, I want you to turn to one last verse this morning. And you're still a little bit confused about the clarification of the subject and the doctrine that we're speaking upon this morning. If you took the word repentance out of the Bible, repent, repentance, if you took that phrase or that name or that word out of our English Bible, did you know you'd be taking a few hundred words out of our New Testament? You know, you would be ridding our uh, thinking and our belief system about what our forefathers believed. You would just be totally a foreign of what they believe. I think that's where we've gotten in America. Y'all forgive me, but I believe that's where we're at. And I think that's why our country's in the shape she's in. Nobody has one time said America needs to repent from the sexual revolution that came in here in the 60s and the 70s. Amen. Rock and rollers that came in here and completely destroyed the morals and the makeup and the fiber of our very being. And we went hook, long, and sinker. We, we took it. We, we, we went with it. Boy, and I'm a conqueror preacher this morning. I didn't think we got one amen there. Amen. You see, we'd rather go along with it than repent. That long hair hit me stuff that came into our country and we're still reading from that. If you don't but listen, if you don't believe this preacher this morning, this fair headed young preacher this morning, people don't even know which bathroom to go to now. <laughs> Look how far we've slipped as a nation morally. Because our preachers I don't blame I don't blame that group. I blame the preachers, but mostly the preachers and the churches that would just stand up and preach on their hind uh, hind legs, amen. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Now we're in Luke chapter number 16. I did say we close. Some of you haven't breathed or smiled since I started preaching. <laughs> I'm worried about you. I'm worried. I mean, have you repented? <laughs> it will change you. I know I'm not perfect, but I know I've done what God's asked me to do. Amen. Now if you still have some questions, if you still have some reservation, you always need to take it to the Lord and you need to go to the scriptures and Get full clarification. You go to the book of Luke chapter 16. Still there, isn't it? Verse number 23, it says, In hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. He may not have believed in repentance before uh, he went to hell, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, we find out in verse number 23, the rich man, did you know and understand this? He wanted, excuse me, uh, verse number 30, he wanted somebody. It says, if one will go to them from the dead, they will what church class? What does it say? Yeah. Huh. He wanted someone to go to his five brothers who was lost. And tell them about the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And share with them what he was going to do on the cross. So that they might repent. Amen. It's in the Bible. It's all through the Bible. But here we see that it's something that's holding someone back from going to heaven. It's not knowledge. Knowledge is everywhere. If, 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 you know, uh, if, if we claim that knowledge is our excuse, we just didn't know we were ignorant, Pastor, I think God once went, winked at ignorant. He's not going to wink at your ignorance anymore. You've got the Internet. You've got a church. You've got a pastor. You've got a Bible. These people didn't have a complete uh, canon of Scripture back in this day, but they still knew about repentance. Here we've got the whole Bible today, and we, we still don't want to preach on it. Amen. Hey, what's the problem? i tell you what the problem is. We're a little afraid of it. <coughs> set you free. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Amen. You believe the Bible today? Amen. You believe this Bible doctrine uh, of repentance? Amen. You believe the nation and the world could, could collapse without the teaching and the preaching of this one doctrine? I believe so. 
I, I believe that that's where we're at today, and I believe that the Bible is true. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The difference between uh, having repentance and not having is sincerity versus insincerity. It's the distance between your head. You know about him up here. Some people will die and go to hell. The distance between, 18 inches of distance between their head and their heart. They know about him. Amen. Spiritually up here. And they know about him as a historical figure. They know about him. They've been taught about Jesus in the Sunday school and in the Bible school. But until it becomes sincerity, until it becomes a part of your heart, that's what God calls repent. Until it becomes real in your I was talking to a man just before we come out here. And I said, please explain to me, you remember this church and other churches before you got saved. Would you please tell me what the difference was before and after? Remember the church on the roll, just not on the roll going to heaven. And I'm quoting him, and I would not defame him, and I would not tell you who it is. And he quoted, he said, Pastor, it's a hard thing. With the heart, man, believe it. Am I right? See, a lot of people believe it up here, but they're not believing it here. They're believing with their head, but they're not believing with their heart. When you believe with your heart, you'll change. It'll become reality. You'll turn from your sin. You'll turn to Jesus. That's a gift of God. That's it. When, it, when that good ground, when the good seed of God's word falls in the good ground of your heart, it'll take root. Lord. Amen. Sounds like Sharon's a blessing. Hallelujah.